Due to overwhelming requests in my email from a lot of different new subscribers to this channel, today's video is going to be a little bit of a catch up and trying to explain a lot of these people's questions on where do they start prepping, how do they start prepping, what is it they need to do. And today's video we're going to be covering this, answer some of these questions and get these people uh, on the right track to be prepared. It is so vitally important nowadays for you to start being prepared. A lot of people will say it's a little too late. It's never really too late. It's just going to cost you a lot more money at this time in the game. So what you really want to do is, the first thing you want to start off with is rice. You want to start off putting away rice. Now you can store rice in a, quite a few different ways. It's very simple to do. It just depends on what you have at your fingertips and how much money you have to invest in your preps. So you want to store it ideally in a molar bag with oxygen absorbers. That's going to get you the longest shelf life. Next, you can store it in a vacuum sealed bag. That'll also get you a very long shelf life. You can watch any of my rice videos and I'll explain all that stuff to you. You can also store it in canning jars and you can also store it for a few years in an airtight container. So rice is a very good staple to have. One of the ones you really want to make sure that you do have. Next is going to be pasta. Pasta can be stored the same way as rice for your long-term food storage. Next, you want to store flour. You want to make sure that you do have plenty of flour and also yeast. Yeast you can store similar to your rice and flour. I would highly suggest that you store your rice once you do either vacuum seal it or something like that. Put it into your freezer to try to make sure and extend the shelf life of the yeast. But having a lot of flour because you can do a lot of different things from cooking to baking to making bread and all this kind of stuff. Sugar is another big one that you want to make sure that you are stockpiling at this point in time. A lot of your dry goods as far as dried beans, if you know how to prepare dried beans properly, you have to be very careful with your dried beans because a lot of times the beans have to be rinsed, washed and soaked a certain way because if you don't follow those certain methods on certain types of beans, it can make you sick. Be very cautious when you're doing your dried beans. I would highly suggest with any of these, you can always, if you want, you can take and cut off the directions on how to prepare any of these type of things. And you can tape them right on the outside of your Mylar bags, your vacuum sealed bags, your canning jars, whatever it may be that you're going to store those products in. Having all those different types of goods and dry goods are very, very important. You also want to make sure you do have plenty of salt, sugar, uh, different types of spices, and those things covers you on your dry goods. So moving on down the line, we're going to move over to canned goods now. Now canned goods is all based on what you like to eat. A lot of people don't like canned vegetables, but in a, an emergency type situation, beggars can't be choosers. So if you like corn, get corn, green beans, peas, you can get spinach, you can get asparagus, whatever it is you want to get. You want to make sure that you are getting those type of things so that you have ways of making meals and you're getting nutrition in your body. You also want to make sure that you are stockpiling canned potatoes. If you can get canned potatoes and you can get them relatively cheap, make sure you are stockpiling canned potatoes because they will last for a very long time and they will also always give you something a little bit different than having rice and pasta. Don't just stockpile all of one thing. If you are starting out, you want to start out buying a little bit of each, put it away, and then just keep doing that. Week by week, or if you do your shopping bi-weekly, do it every bi-weekly, every two weeks, you buy some stuff and you put it away. Make sure you have a way to store this product and everything else that it's in stored in a cool, dry place in your home. Do not store your food and stuff in high temperature areas, such as your garage, or if it freezes, you don't want to store those type of products out there either 
because it will damage the product and everything else just like will heat will also damage the product so it has to be in a controlled environment that's something that you have to remember any type of canned meats that you do like whether it's tuna fish uh, chicken um, spam it could be any type of canned meat period canned hams you know you want to make sure that you do have those on standby you want to have that part of your press because you're going to get pretty bored of just eating rice pasta or potatoes so having these canned meats are going to make a world of difference in your emergency preparedness and in your own personal life because you will feel like in the time that you are going through if you are into your preps it will give you a sense of comfort when you can cook something and it tastes good and you are not eating the same thing day after day you also want to make sure that you are looking at and storing up as much as possible water you want to make sure you do have water uh, some way to purify water is probably going to be the best bet because a lot of people just can't afford to stockpile a lot of water. They don't have the space and water is so very critically important. So having some way to purify your water, having some way to make sure that you can um, obtain the water, make sure you know where your water source is, is another great tool you're going to need in this part of your preparedness having a plan a plan is a very important thing a plan covers a lot of different things that i've talked about in several of my videos and a plan is something that you have to put together for you and your family so you know what to do in case of emergency if you're staying in your home or if you have to leave your home you have to have two different plans and this way here, it makes things a lot less chaotic and it also makes it to where you can survive in either one of those different types of situations. You also wanna make sure, depending on what your skill level is, having a good first aid kit that is going to basically cover your needs of your knowledge just in case somebody in your family or a close friend or somebody gets injured while the emergency is going on that you may be able to tend to them until you can get the proper authorities there or get them to the proper authorities so it's all based on what you know now granted a lot of people don't know a lot about medical issues but if you have a decent first aid kit where maybe you can stop the bleeding a tourniquet uh, apply burn cream whatever it may be right down to a simple band-aid to cover a boo-boo is very important at that point in time these are all things that we all need to be aware of and we need to be prepping for these are the things that are the essential items now we could go on for a long time during this video talking about all the different types of things and that's why on my channel i have things set up for just you it's broken down into different types of playlists and then if you're looking for different types of goods and everything else you can go on to my amazon storefront where in which i took all the guessing out for you it's broken down into categories for you so it makes it easy for you to go in there and see some of the stuff that i'm talking about and this way here you can make a determination if, if that's something you want to purchase if that's something you want to look into you don't have to actually buy the product from my amazon storefront you can click on the product and then we all know how amazon works it's going to show you a whole bunch of other options that goes along with that product then you can search from there and maybe find something you can afford maybe find something that's better it just depends on your own particular taste and pocketbook so i'm survival preparedness for beginners i hope this helped people out and knowing where to get started and why it is so important for you to be prepping and i really appreciate everybody reaching out to me through email and asking me these questions and that's why I address them as I stated in my live stream that I was going to address these issues on this video. So thank you once again for being a subscriber.
to survival preparedness for beginners i really do appreciate it hit that thumbs up button on the way out if you would please and until next time folks you all stay safe you keep prepping and i'll catch you all on the flip side